So this panel is about entering markets in diverse Southeast Asia. We want to talk about the, the opportunities as well as the challenges. As we all know, the number of VCs in the region has increased massively in the recent years due to forecasts of growth in the region. Um, internet continues to, uh, the internet access continues to shoot up. There's a population of actually uh, 641 million now, I believe. And there's other factors, including the rising middle class that's fueling it, right? And uh, I believe like 3.8 million internet users are coming online um, every single year, or actually month. So this is humongous growth, uh, thanks to smartphones. Um, so this panel explores how companies, uh, big and small, homegrown in the US, are leveraging Singapore to enter the Southeast Asian market. Uh, so we'll start off with introductions. Um, David, do you want to talk about, uh, we all know what Google does, but what does Google do specifically in, uh, uh, in, in the, the region, Southeast Asia? What, do, what does your team do? A fun fact about yourself. And then um, Tik Yong will talk about Shopee. Sure. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I'm David. Uh, I think everyone knows what Google does. Uh, but one thing you might not know, uh, Google actually has a very large presence, significant presence of engineering in Singapore. Uh, our global headquarter for NBU, next billion users, uh, as well as payments, is actually headquartered in Singapore. Uh, we're hiring, we're going, uh, we're using Singapore as a base. Uh, one thing, one fun fact, uh, Cheryl was asking me to talk about it, is uh, I'm actually, you know, I don't sound Singaporean, uh, but I'm actually half Singaporean. Uh, my mom is from Singapore. Uh, after graduation, she moved to Hong Kong for a job, found my dad, and I grew up in Hong Kong in the US. And now that I'm actually moving back to where my mom is from, all my cousins, all my uncles and aunties are still there. So I love it. I'm calling Singapore my home now. Uh, what, what's your team? What does your team work on? Ah, so I lead the engineering team uh, of Google Pay in Singapore. So we focus on payments digitizing payments for the world. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is T.Y. So can I have a show of hands? Who here is aware of Shopee? At least heard of Shopee, seen us? Oh, wow, quite a number. Cool. Thank you. So yeah, I'm, I'm from Shopee. I'm employee number 30 in, in, in Shopee. Um, so Shopee is an e-commerce you know, platform based in Southeast Asia and Taiwan. We, we seek to be the, the one and only, the leading player, uh, e-commerce guy in, in Southeast Asia. We want to be the Amazon of Southeast Asia. Um, and we have big dreams. We have big dreams. We want to really own this, this space. Um, so we want, we want to share our experience on you know, how we worked in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, Southeast Asia is a difficult market. It's not just a single market. It consists of many different you know, uh, differences, culture, uh, and, and, and infrastructure. So we, we started in 2015. Uh, when we first started, we had about 50 odd people in, in the Singapore team. Uh, and, and by now, I think we've grown quite significantly. We were quite lucky. We, we, we lucked out on, on the curve. Uh, so we rode the wave. And, and now, I think we have close to 10,000 staff across the region. So Shopee is now quite significant across the region. Across eight countries, we have 10,000 staff. In Singapore alone, we have more than 1,000. More than 1,000 staff in Singapore working on both development as well as BD, cross-border operations. Yeah. And a fun fact about myself, I am a big fan of team sports. So I started um, the, the Dragon Boat team in, in Shopee. So every Sunday, I'll, I'll pull a, uh, a few guys with me. Uh, we'll go to um, Marina, Marina Bay and, and, and we'll row. Yeah, fun fact. Awesome, thank you. So um, we all know, uh, so Google started their office in Singapore in 2000. Seven, I believe, and it was largely a sales and marketing office. I believe Facebook and a lot of big tech giants started out as a sales and, and marketing office there. But lately, there's been a trend where um, I, um, Stripe just announced uh, last year uh, an engineering office in Singapore, and then Google had already led the way uh, in 2016, uh, opening, as David say, a big engineering office. So I guess I'm curious, um, like you know, um, why this move, and um, you know, how how has uh, like a big company like Google, been leveraging Singapore to enter the Southeast Asian market? Sure. Um, just overall, let's look at um, Southeast Asia as a whole. Uh, Southeast Asia as a unit, uh, we're looking at it's the sixth largest economy in the world. Uh, 
Uh, in terms of population, you were mentioning over 600 million. It's the third largest uh, in terms of population just after China and India. And you look at the international uh, internet population, 350 million, and you'd compare this with the US, it's just, it's over the population of the US. And you looked at, you just mentioned, we're growing, right, over 3 million users a month. That is an insane speed. Um, so what we did is in, in a few years ago, we started an effort of having teams in Singapore focusing on the region. So we started NBU effort, which is next billion users effort. I'll give an example is uh, Google Pay for India. Uh, just in three years, uh, we launched it a year and a half ago. Uh, we're now at 45 million active monthly user. Uh, in terms of total payment value, which is annualized, it's over $81 billion. Now, put that in perspective, uh, that is equivalent to 3% of India GDP. And that is only in a year and a half. Uh, imagine what this can do in the next five to 10 years. Um, so uh, we are now taking what we have learned in the region and applying it globally. Uh, so we are extremely happy to have selected Singapore as our base to grow this um, effort. And also realizing that uh, you need a product engineering team in Singapore to build products for the region, not just a sales and marketing office. Right? That's right. Yeah. And so on the other hand, Shopee, uh, a Southeast Asian homegrown um, not startup anymore, unicorn, right? Um, you, you guys have recently raised $1.5 billion to expand in the region, which is a lot. Um, and you know, of the seven unicorns in Southeast Asia, uh, three of them are your competitors in e-commerce. So the fight for e-commerce is, is really hot right now. Tokopedia, Bukalapa, as well as Lazada, right? And two of them actually uh, operate out of Indonesia. Um, and, and you and Lazada are, or Shopee and Lazada are in Singapore. So what has your experience uh, at Shopee been growing, uh, you know, beyond Singapore to the Southeast Asian market? And specifically, I guess I'm curious about um, your, using your base uh, in Singapore. Um, like, what are the advantages of that versus um, uh, having Indonesia, the largest market in Southeast Asia, as your base? So I, I think that there's no surprise that um, you know e-commerce is a is a big market. Uh, if, if you don't trust me, you can trust the Google Tomasek report. Uh, the Google Tomasek report says, uh, I hope it's true, that you know e-commerce e e now is not the biggest uh, across all internet uh, economies. Uh, but in, in in 10, 15 years time, it will be the biggest share. It will be, it'll be the biggest. It's one zero two billion uh, dollar market. So it's a big market, much bigger than I think ride sharing, uh, and bigger, not much bigger, 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 and and there's tremendous potential. So I think companies like us, we, we often look for markets with huge potential. We want to go and solve the big problems out in the market, but we also recognize that Southeast Asia is not a common, it's not a un, it's not a one size fit all market. There's no single answer to this to this region. Um, we are operating in six out of the ten ASEAN countries. Uh, and, and everyone's different. Everyone's different for different reasons. The payment method is diverse. For instance, in, in, in Vietnam, it's almost 100% cash on delivery. There's no credit card in, in Vietnam. In, in Singapore, it's almost 100% credit card. Uh, so it's the easiest market uh, to operate in. Whereas in Indonesia, Indonesia is a very interesting uh, market where there is no big, there's no single payment method that is, uh, that is, that is common. You have a small percentage of credit card. You have a small percentage of offline payment. You can go to the convenience store, the Indomara and the Alphamart of the world to make payment. You can make payment via ATM machine. You can make payment through virtual account. So, so we often have to customize our own approach and localize you know, even our payment methods to suit local needs. And, and it's, it's difficult. It's difficult operating in Indonesia. I, I mentioned ATM machine. So that's one of the biggest user of you know, uh, payment methods. So what the users do, what the buyers will do is they will go to the ATM machine, they will use our bank account number, they'll pay to my bank account number. And at the back end, I would have to search you know, who has paid this and match it to a certain checkout. So it's manual, it's laborious. Do we want to do it? No. Do we have a choice? No as well. So, so that's the reality of you know, working in Indonesia. We often have to customize, localize to what the local user behavior is. 
And as to the question, you know, why do we not want to you know, put, our, put more emphasis uh, and then maybe our effort on Indonesia? We, we do spend a lot of time looking at Indonesia. So we study the user behavior, how sellers sell, how buyers purchase. We, we, we study them all the time. Um, but I think if we were to put our HQ you know, in, in Indonesia, that would take us away from the other markets. I think being in a, in a neutral location like Singapore uh, helps that the market is a bit smaller. We don't need to worry about the market. It, it, it's a good thing that we think about the region, we maintain the regional focus, that we think about what's happening in Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, and even Taiwan, and we try to solve those issues. I would think if we were to be based you know, in, in Indonesia, we would be overly focused on Indonesia, developing products only for Indonesia, and, and maybe neglect the other part of Southeast Asia. Very interesting. So your biggest market right now is still Singapore? No, nope. our, our biggest market is Indonesia. It, it, it is Indonesia. Yep. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because I've also read that um, right now we're hitting, Southeast Asian e-commerce companies are hitting a, saturated, a saturation point in terms of online marketing because a lot of the uh, ads are targeting the same people because uh, the penetration is only 4% in e-commerce and the rest are still largely offline. So there's a huge, huge trend actually of a lot of the e-commerce players uh, particularly in, in Indonesia, going offline and opening, like Tokopedia raised uh, $1.1 billion to open up physical shops in Indonesia. Bukalapa uh, is opening 400,000 kiosks all around Indonesia. Um, is, is Shopee kind of tackling that model as well? I, I think that's still on our pipeline. I think we have not uh, firm plans on, on that yet. I think there's still a lot more we can do on the online space. So for instance, we, we recently just launched the live stream so we, we notice that you know as as the internet uh, you know speed gets gets better, um, buyers are not just content with images, text. They want videos. So so we, we recently launched the live stream feature where sellers can broadcast their own products live, uh, and and this is something that we have tried in Indonesia. We've tried in, in a few markets, and, and it seems quite promising. So it's a new capability, new feature that we are bringing to the to the market that. Hopefully our sellers can sell better, the buyers get a different user experience and, and, and spend more time on, on the platform. That's a very interesting point. So Sanya, who, who is from Facebook, who is supposed to be our third panelist, couldn't make it today. She was sick. But when I was talking to her, she was talking about how for Facebook entering Southeast Asian market, video is a huge strategy, which is it's getting big here too, but particularly for uh, Southeast Asia and mobile. Uh, video and mobile was just a, a huge focus for them in, in Southeast Asia. Um, so I recently went back to spend about six weeks in Southeast Asia in December, and then whenever I go buy something, um, I was in uh, Malaysia, um, Singapore, as well as Thailand, I get bombarded by you know, so many payment options. E-payments is truly heating up in Southeast Asia, right? We have Grab Pay, we have Go Pay, Faith Pay, whatever, Google Pay, Apple Pay, so many things. <laughs> um, so what, what is, um, I mean, eventually, the market will consolidate, right? So what, what do you think, uh, David, uh, of the war and e-payments in Southeast Asia? What are the opportunities and challenges? Um, well, I don't see this as a war. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm seeing is all this company has shared a same common goal and same common mission is to help digitize um, payment. Uh, more importantly is to make sure that we are financial inclusion as well as economically empowering all businesses. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, this was an example was given by one of my leads, uh, one of a good friend of mine. Um, he was explaining to me when I was joining payments. Uh, back in 2003, 2004, um, Google Maps came out. And one of the leaders on Google Maps was saying that we are not building another map product. We are actually building a platform now, fast forward to today, right? you would not have imagined that without maps, there's so many businesses are unable to build on top of it. Right? I'm assuming that who actually took Uber or Lyft today? OK, it's good. I would say that over about close to half the audience today. Without maps opening as a platform, it's unlikely we'll be able to see uh, Uber or Lyft. Uh, it's the same thing that we are seeing as being uh, working on payments is to building out this infrastructure. Um, all this will enable the next generation of innovation. Right? We talked about payments. We talked about e-commerce. 
Uh, in Southeast Asia, we're seeing that not only is mobile first, majority of users are actually mobile only. Uh, without mobile digital payment, they're unlikely able to pay. So this also enable e-commerce. Uh, so we're seeing this is uh, pushing this forward. Yeah, I was actually going to dive a little bit deeper just on that because 90% um, of, so the, half of the Southeast Asian population are online now. It's about 340 million people and 90% of them are pretty much mobile first. Right. So David, you specifically, you've been um, exposed to, you were at Google here in, in Silicon Valley, you worked uh, in China, and you work in Southeast Asia. So obviously US and, and China are homogeneous market, huge markets. Uh, you, can, you built one product for the whole country, but Southeast Asia is super diverse and made up of 10 separate countries and languages and cultures and all that. So what do you, have you observed are the major differences in the go-to-market strategy and, and challenges there? I can talk about a little bit of my history and the journey, how I get to Singapore. Um, I started my career here in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley, uh, back in 2000. Um, I worked until 2011. I decided to move to China. Uh, and just last year, I decided to move to Southeast Asia. Uh, when you see, when you look at the pattern, and you look at why I'm doing this, uh, I was just talking to some of my friends chasing earlier. Chasing the trends. Yeah, it's chasing the trend. It's actually true. Uh, back in the 90s and back in 2000, that is, you're seeing that all the innovation, a lot of companies are started in the Bay Area, in Silicon Valley, in the US. And I would say the last six, or potentially last five years, the explosive growth are coming out from China. In 2013, if you go to China, and versus now going to China, you would not have imagined this. In just like three or four years, uh, the entire society, I would say 80% or 90%, has gone from cash to cashless. Uh, that's an insanely high speed. Right? If I had a choice to take time travel back to 2013 and talk to the, myself and convince myself this is the future, I would be laughing my 2019 me, myself, it's like there's no way we will be able to see that kind of transformation. So I was living in China from 2011 to 2017. I saw the transformation and I realized that, that the next phase is going to be in Southeast Asia. Right? So I have seen this happen and I want to be part of it. I want to take what I've learned and I want to bring that into Southeast Asia. Super exciting. So, so take I, you I, on, the, yeah. So I think the, the, the growth is, is tremendous, really, in, in Southeast Asia. The, um, we, we are at the tip of a big transformation happening now in Southeast Asia. So if, if you think about those markets that, that David mentioned, the, the US, China, they have all, you know, the market has more or less aggregated, consolidated. The, the champions are more or less clear. Whereas if you look at Southeast Asia, I think it's still a, quite a fragmented market in, in most, of the countries that we operate in is, is still very much a two horse, three horse race in in e-commerce e e at least. So in in the in Indonesia, I think um, that as you hear a few, there's there's us, there's the what we call the the, the green guys, uh, and the, the red guys, the, the Tokopedias and and Buklapaks. and in in the other markets, there's us and Lazada. In Vietnam, there's Tiki. So competition is real. Competition is tremendous. In, in Taiwan, Taiwan is our most advanced market. Taiwan is a very advanced market in terms of e-commerce. Um, there we are, we are again in a race together with um, PC Home. So competition is real, competition is almost unavoidable, but it's something that we embrace. We, we almost feel we, we want to work together to, to educate the market and get more offline traffic online. Um, so I think if, if we were to you know, look five, ten years ahead, what will the world look like in Southeast Asia? I, I think the question is still not so clear. But I think if you have that you know, passion to, to build something, to create something, to leave a legacy behind, uh, I, I think there's no better time. There's no better time than now to be in technology in Southeast Asia. And this is really the time to you know, build something, create something, and to show your sons and, and grandsons that this is something that you, know, you can leave your, leave your name behind. I mean, obviously, a competition is actually healthy, right? I think uh, Huiling this morning also pointed that out because uh, you, you feel each other's creativity and innovation through that as well. Um, so before we move on to Q&A, as a pretty short panel, um, 
uh, open up questions to, to you guys. Uh, the, my last question for both of you is in terms of like talent and all that, because uh, obviously you guys are here, you know, uh, very, I mean, obviously we're all here to hire or convince people to go back to Southeast Asia. Um, so I'm curious, how is the talent back home? Like, you know, because it's such a unique market, it's such a unique unique region, do you find it hard to find talent to grow the, the company um, and you have to provide a lot of training? And also, I'm, I'm personally curious, how diverse are your teams? Is What is the percentage break, breakdown between Singaporeans versus Southeast Asian, Americans, Europeans and whatnot? Yeah, so I can, I can speak for um, the team in Singapore. For us, we have more than a thousand staff uh, operating out of Singapore. You, 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 you'd be surprised Singaporeans are not the majority. We are not the majority. We actually welcome talent all over. Um, so I think I was told we have more than 27 nationalities operating out of Singapore. We have people from, I think, Russia, Poland, uh, Americans, of course, um, some Brits, Chinese. What's the breakdown, you think? Um, I think it's a third of us uh, are Singaporeans, maybe a third um, Asians, uh, maybe, and then the other third is from, from the, rest of the world. rest of the world. Yeah. So we, we welcome talent all over, um, but it's really hard to, to, to find talent in, 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 in at this time. I think the, the supply, supply demand gap is still, still quite large. Uh, the, the schools are churning as, as, as fast as possible, as many as possible. Uh, we, we often depend on NUS, NTU, Profo uh, to churn even more talent for us. Uh, so, so when you say challenging to find talent, you mean locally in Singapore or just from around the world in general? In, in, in Singapore, it's, it's bad. Across the region, we also can't really find the, the top tier talent. Because e-commerce is, is, is a new segment. So you can't really find people with solid e-commerce background in Southeast Asia. Yes, you can find them in, 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 in US. Um, but in, in, in Singapore, in Thailand, Indonesia, those who have done e-commerce probably have two years of experience, and, and, and these guys get get uh, snatched up quite quite quickly. So, David, does Google provide a lot of training to like train people up in, in this, these skills? Uh, we do. Um, obviously, uh, as a Nugler joining uh, Google, uh, we provide all the necessary trainings. Uh, we will send them to the U.S. Uh, for weeks long training, uh, they will get immersed into different groups. Uh, and obviously, we have a very structured uh, program when a new engineer joining the team, uh, you will be assigned to a mentor, uh, and the mentor will walk you through. Um, Google is a big company uh, with a lot of different technology. Uh, sometimes you do need a little bit more training uh, to get a uh, ramp up. But in general, it's, it's pretty decent. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I think we have about like 12 minutes or, or 11 minutes for questions now. Um, anyone would like to ask the panel? Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> My name is Xing Yi, and uh, I am graduated last year from University of Chicago. I'm working in the Bay Area right now. I'm working for a consulting firm. So I'm actually very interested along the line of the talent acquisition part. Um, I know we talked a lot about um, the engineering talent, et cetera, but I, I personally also am a little bit more interested in the non-technical roles, et cetera. So how do you see the talent pipeline for kind of the non-technical roles, the management roles, et cetera? And when it comes down to that, would you prefer to hire locally or like internationally? Um, so so the, the, the need for talent is not just in the development areas. We also require talent in the management fields. So you, you, you mentioned you were from consulting. I, I was from consulting as well. Um, so I was from BCG. I was, been, I, I, I was in oil and gas, actually. So I, I did oil and gas for a couple of years in consulting, and I switched over to e-commerce. So we, we, we need people who are able to, to problem solve. So we don't just need people in, in te technical uh, areas. We need people who can problem solve. Um, because we are breaking new grounds, we're looking into new areas, and, and there's there's endless uh, number of you know, issues that we have to that we have to look at. So I think that's the, the underlying skills. I think we, it was mentioned this morning as well. We look for people who can problem solve. We look for people who are able to look at numbers, look at data, and, and, and fix it. So to, to elaborate a bit more, we have been training our guys as well to, to script. Um, so, so for us, Excel is, is quite a yesterday tool. Even for our business teams, we train them in, in, in coding. So for, for my ops team, for example, we, we hardly use you know, Excel, VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, yesterday too. 
So, so all of them, all of them now have to pick up coding. If they don't know, we will train them um, because the data volume is just too large. So we have to often, you know, code, write some script to, to get the data analysis that we, that we require. Um, so that's, that's the profile of you know, management site talent that we are looking for. Yeah, it's really interesting. When I was back uh, in Asia running Magic, um, uh, the profile of people that I tended to ended up hiring for my management team is our management consultants, because those are the, the people who were the smartest people in Southeast Asia. Whereas here, a lot of big companies hire the, the founders who had a failed startup. Like entrepreneurs are seen as the talent that you want to get here. So it's a little bit of a difference. So just to follow up on what TY was saying, um, Google also are hiring and looking across the board. Uh, not only we have a very significant engineering presence in Singapore, uh, but finance, marketing, sales, analytical, HR, any de department that you can think of, we need those people. And in terms of talent acquisitions, uh, we're getting both from local as well as within the region and overseas as well. Uh, we've been very fortunate uh, in terms of hiring. Uh, when we started saying that we will be growing Singapore office, uh, immediately we are already getting a lot of uh, 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 inquiries. Uh, just for my team itself, in the last four months, we have doubled, we have increased by 50% already. And your team is engineering or product or what? Uh, my team is in engineering, uh, but across the board from product, um, uh, user research, from user design, marketing, uh, finance, um, all has been growing. Yeah, and you have a team of 100 that you built from scratch, right? Yeah, yes. pretty amazing. Um, so I'm curious in the audience, um, how many of you here are think, like, thinking about starting a company in Southeast Asia? I'm just curious. Like any anyone? No? Okay. <laughs> Maybe one or two. How many of you are thinking eventually moving back to Singapore or Southeast Asia? So, okay, so majority of the crowd. Um, what, what do you guys want to know uh, about Southeast Asia? Because what I'm me, hearing when I interact with people outside let me, is that. Uh, yeah. Say a few things about being an entrepreneur. I actually quit Google in 2014 uh, and started my own company with a couple of my buddies uh, from Google. Uh, I've never lived in Beijing. I moved to Beijing with two of my buddies and started a company in Beijing. Um, if you are thinking of starting a company or being an entrepreneur, uh, there, is, there isn't a better time to move to Southeast Asia or Singapore. Um, venture capital is pouring in. You can talk to some of the VC. Right? The ecosystem is there. Um, the, the words are out, right? especially after the movie is out. People know where Singapore is. <laughs> right? um, it Crazy is rich Asians. <laughs> right. Uh, I actually think that it's the best time uh, with the government supporting this. A lot of my friends actually started uh, their own startup uh, based on the government funding, uh, right coming off from uh, 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 National Singapore uh, University. So it will be a great time. I know no hands was up uh, just now <laughs> when asking for entrepreneur, but rethink. Uh, it is a great time to be. I have a sense I was talking to some people, uh, they were, because they've been away, a lot of people here have been away from Southeast Asia for a long time, that they, they weren't too familiar with the market back home, so they want to enter through like a big company first to get familiar with the market before they start their companies. I don't know if that's what you guys feel. Um, <laughs> there's one question up there. Oh, here, yeah. Hey there, uh, my name's Ian Go. I'm a product designer at a data analytics company here in San Francisco. Uh, one question I wanted to push on was, so I grew up in Singapore, but I'm actually from the Philippines originally. And when I ever go back, I see there's a big, you know, economic gap between, you know, um, how much money people have in Singapore versus what they have in the Philippines. And I'm really curious in terms of developing product from Singapore, how do you adapt those products to other markets like the Philippines where, you know, people don't have as much money or just the way that they use that product is so different? Um, that is, uh, thank you for the question, and that is exactly what we're trying to tackle, uh, especially my team. Uh, we're not looking at just because people are able to spend money, because this and different status. Uh, our goal is very simple. We want to make sure that it's financial inclusion. Uh, we want to build a product for the next billion users. Uh, 
We want to build a product for everyone, not just because that you have a bank or you have a few cars, things like this. Uh, if you have a mobile phone, you have an internet access, right, you will be able to include it in this uh, ecosystem. Um, so this is actually very important. Right? We're seeing uh, micro businesses based on uh, digital payments. Um, so having this platform built is very essential for the future. I guess to his question, how, how, how do you get that from Singapore? Because Singapore is such a different level where everyone is well to do there. Do you have to travel to all these other uh, countries to learn the culture? Do you hire someone from Philippines into your team to understand that? How do you go about that? We do both. Um, obviously, we have a big team of researchers um, going to different countries to understand the user behavior, doing user study, as well as doing market analysis. Uh, but we also hire locally as well. We're trying to be very inclusive. Um, earlier, TUI was saying that his company has over 27 countries. Uh, we don't break down our numbers, uh, but Google also has a tremendous amount of talent pool from all around Southeast Asia. Uh, so when we do uh, launch a product to a specific country, a lot of times the first thing is let's pool a team of people that is actually from that country so they can actually build it for that country as well. Uh, one thing that I always uh, shoot for is I want to make sure that the team that they're working on, they're passionate about. They're not just building a product for someone that's using it that they actually don't know who's using it. The best way of doing this is you're building a product that you know your friends and family are actually using it. So we are able to actually do that in Singapore. Is there another question back there? Hi, um, so I'm a software engineer um, in the Bay Area, and I'm a native Southeast Asian myself. And uh, my question is, um, to, as, as we all know, Southeast Asia is a very diverse um, region in terms of cultures and a lot of other things. But um, when it comes to working with different teams, uh, with teams in different countries in, in Southeast Asia, um, are there any challenges or are there any like common cultures that um, like people share? Um, you know, this between these countries. Take Young, do you want to comment on that? Um, well, I think we have many in, in in our engineering team. We have many people from we from Indonesia, Vietnam. So so we have quite a mix in our engineering teams. So in our, in our development teams, we have people from Singapore, China, uh, Malaysia, quite a lot of Malaysians, um, Philippines, some Filipino, uh, Indonesian, Vietnamese. So I, I, I think it was a, a good mix enough to make sure there's no dominant you know, kind of uh, player in, in any of these teams. Um, but we work quite well. I think we, we regularly share information. Uh, sharing was done in English, so no, no issues with language. Um, and there, there was no major challenges. The only challenges came from timeline. I think uh, we, if we can manage our timeline a bit better and, and not have too many uh, last minute uh, kind of deployment, I think those are the our, our, our main kind of challenges. Each cultur culturally, I think we have all been able to work very well with one another, be it in the development teams or in the business teams. Um, yeah. Um, I remember when I was mentoring a lot of entrepreneurs and startups back uh, uh, in Malaysia at Magic, uh, a lot of the founders had to travel a lot around Southeast Asia to run their businesses, start their companies. And I think that's kind of a, in a way, a given, right? Would you agree that travel is like almost, air, you're on Air Asia flights as a leader, especially, or head of in a group, um, you're traveling twice a week, kind of. So to cap it off, um, you guys want to give your closing one-liner about uh, perhaps, um, you know, a, a tip that you can give everyone here who's thinking about the Southeast Asian market, uh, either to start a company there or to uh, join a company back home, uh, you know, what, what would you say they should think about? Um, I have three points. Uh, I will use uh, what the Google guiding principle, uh, the founder started off in a garage, uh, one thing that always remind our uh, employee is focus on the user and focus on the user and focus on the users. Um, that is always going to be driving the success of the business and always come and come and user first. So, so for me, um, I think we have, we have a, a 3S approach within, within Shopee. 
Um, so in, in, in this order is speed, sustainability, and then scale. So, so we, are, we have achieved you know, speed. We managed to catch up with our, with our competition in, in three years. I think the next step for us is in, in sustainability. How can we sustain the business both from a um, funding capital management point of view as well as talent? And, and the, the next step then is to scale up even more as we, as we build the business further. So I think the second point is then um, there's, there's really no better time than now to head back to Southeast Asia or for tech. So whether is it the, the, the orange, the blues, the greens, the, the reds, uh, there, there's, there's tremendous opportunities. Uh, and, and also the multicolors, uh, Google, <laughs> of course. Uh, there, there's tremendous potential. There's tremendous potential not just for the technical roles and also for business roles, product management, cross-border, uh, operations, all requiring data. So I think this is the best time for, for all of us here to, to really consider uh, you know, heading back, uh, you know, speaking for the government, uh, and then explore, and explore. I think there's many of us here, uh, outside in the booth as well. Find out a bit more. As you find out a bit more, you realise that the companies uh, that are based in Singapore and Indonesia have grown fairly large. You, you may know of the companies, but you may not know they are actually quite big. And, and they have grown in sophistication, that the roles are getting more specialised. There are roles that may, may fit what they are doing now. So I think talk to, talk to us uh, outside, talk to all of us. Uh, there's, there's tremendous uh, potential back home. Yeah, I, I guess as a final thought is, I mean, that's why we're called emerging market, right? It's emerging, there's still a lot of problems, a lot of challenges, you know, it's, it's not perfect yet. But if you wait to go back when it's perfect, then unfortunately all the opportunities are already snapped up. So, so then really you should look at, um, you know, contributing now so that you can be there when the market is finally more mature. Thank you so much, uh, my panelists, uh, David and Tae Kyung, for your wonderful insights, uh, and everyone here as well. That was a great panel. Thank you. Great, thank you.